good day. Uh, today we're going to talk a bit about adding buildings and resources so that in Google Calendar you can actually add rooms and resources in your institution. So uh, this will start in the admin panel and so as you can see on my screen I'm in the admin panel and of course buildings and resources is the place we'll begin this journey. When you're in here you go to resource management and you can bulk upload but I have never done that. So we're gonna walk through the other process, but you can do a CSV file and, and bulk upload. And you just, you click on this and then it'll ask you to upload it. Uh, you'll have to play around with uh, the formatting of it. I'm not, like I said, never done it myself. Not really sure how that one works that well. But if you wanna add one the normal way manually, it goes in here. So when you open it up, there's category. So it's a meeting space or it can be a resource. So for example, if you wanted to have a checkout for projectors, you could make it from here, or vehicles. Uh, and the other one is like places, meeting rooms, conference rooms. Over here, you can give it a title and then what building it's assigned to. And so in our case, we have several buildings. And so each one of them has multiple floors. And so this is a way for us to be able to go, oh, okay, that's in the high school building or that's in the first program building. Next, we have the floor. Simply put, it's what floor it's on. Uh, floor selection, haven't had the need to use that. Resource name, I highly recommend you give it a name, something pretty descriptive so other people will be like, uh -huh, okay, that's what that's called. And then you can even put the capacity, which uh, with recent days in COVID, this is becoming kind of an important thing because a lot of times you can have people in a space, but you don't have a certain number of people or a certain percentage of people of the capacity. So this becomes kind of important now. You can even define features, but you have to add features first. But things you could be is like, do I want the projector turned on? Uh, do I need to use the screen? Like those kind of things can be added as features of the room. And then people could literally just say, like, yeah, I need this, I need this, I need this. Also, you can do visible description, which is just someone saying or you explaining this is what the room looks like, how it feels and how it's set up. So you can actually add in a lot of stuff. Then once you have all, all done, you add add resource and then you're finished. You're, you, you've added it successfully. So let me cancel this really quick. Now let's with, see what this looks like in your calendar. So in calendar, I come in and I'm like, oh, I need to book a room. I make my appointment slot, everything comes up and then we have add rooms. Okay, well, let's add a room. And then it'll jump to, and if you have a hopefully set up to be available rooms only, you can look at or include unavailable rooms. I like to do available rooms only. That's the way you can make it so it's kind of a first come, first serve, who booked this first, that's who gets to use it. And then you'll see all of some suggested ones. These are ones I commonly use. So they come up, the AI is pointing that to me. And then if I go, oh no, it's a CDS one, I can just click here and all the rooms under CDS are listed in this big list here. And same with the other divisions for me, uh, housing residents, the first program, the high school building, the middle school. And so that is how a person can book it. And like I said, it's initially set up so it's first come, first serve. So as long as people are looking for available rooms only, they'll see the ones that have not been booked yet. And that is how you add uh, buildings and resources. Have a great day.